Hello again, everybody. I'm Scott Casper. And I'm Tony Hager. And welcome to the inaugural edition of Global Wrestling News presented by Titan Mercury Wrestling. Now, over the coming weeks, you'll notice some big changes in this program, and we're going to be happy to bring them to you. The 2015 World Championships have come to a close, and for some, it was an event for the ages. Yeah, most importantly, this was a qualifier event for Rio, and, uh, you know, there was... There were some medals that I think that were left off the table, but uh, you know I, I predicted five medals for the Team USA. And uh, but most importantly, I think the biggest thing to take away from this is the women's. They came away from a lot of medals, getting third. Well, the third overall, led by the performance of one Lee Jane's provisor, she earned a 60 kilo bronze medal for the U.S. That propelled the Americans for sure. The oldest of Team USA and the only mother on the squad scored a turn in the closing seconds to defeat her Azerbaijan opponent 4-4 four four with the criteria win. This was the 34-year-old's third world appearance. I, I just really uh, marched to the beat of my own drum. A lot of people would say that 34, you know, your past your prime, your career um, is pretty much over. And um, I really don't believe that. Um, in my locker it said um, a Michael Jordan uh, quote, basically like, um, limitations are just illusions and you set those things upon yourself but I really put it upon myself and, and my family supported me I, I know that Ben will never lie to me and he told me that I had the ability to do this and, <laughs> and I believe him because he is he is brutally honest sometimes <laughs> so I know when he tells me that I have the ability and that he feels like I'm the best in the world that uh, he, he believed in me before I believed in me and so um, it became a reality today and, and when I sized everybody up and when I was wrestling against them, I didn't feel like for any minute that I, I didn't have a chance to win. All right, Tony, we go to Thursday night, women's freestyle. The performance there of the dynamic duo Adeline Gray and Helen Marillis grabbed headlines with their incredible performances. And in a city known for amazing talent, the two American stars powered to dominating victories, both capturing gold medals at the championships. Gray earned her third world title and second straight, while Marillis won her first world championship. The top-ranked Gray used a huge second period to power through a 13-2 tech fall over the 2014 world medalist Quan Zhu of China in the finals at 75 kilos. Gray actually gave up the match's first takedown, but took control in the second period when she turned Zhu and nearly pinned her. Well, the crowd stood and cheered as she finished off the win with a series of leg laces. I was feeling pretty confident going into this year. I didn't think that anybody was really capable of beating me. It would have been more of me beating myself. Uh, going out here on this world stage and then my coach kind of brought up the fact he's like do you know the only, only uh, besides Japan only one other country has ever had a repeat like back-to-back -back years world champion and I was like <gasps> and it just kind of like made my heart sink a little bit because I was like oh no is this I mean statistics I mean, you gotta you can't you have to buy into that by some extent so to go in here I made a pact with myself that I was going to buckle down and really just do the right things consistently and had a great support system and I just was able to do that and here I am as the, as the world champion again. Oh the crowd was the crowd was incredible um it I was like excited before every match because I knew that the crowd was going to be cheering and um just for them to be chanting USA or I saw you know a lot of our girls here with their faces painted and um, I know, you know, every coach that I've ever had uh, since I started wrestling when I was seven is in the stands today. So to, I was just so, so excited. Like, I just couldn't wait to walk through that tunnel and get out on the mat and just wrestle for them. And it, it's just been great. But Scott, their golden performances, like we said, weren't enough. They ended up with a third place finish, you know, with uh, Japan and China finishing first and second. What does the, the well, American win? Uh, the Americans have been consistently improving each and every year. I understand your position, third place. Japan has been in the driver's seat for a long time. They finished in first with 51 points. China took second with 42. They're also, they've also been competing in women's wrestling longer than the United States has. I remember when we didn't have a U.S. team. I remember when the U.S team was finally allowed into the Olympics. I remember when we had three weights, then four, now six. We're getting better each and every year, and i got to believe it's just a little bit more time. Coach Steiner, well, he's got it going on, but you know what else? We've got colleges now that never had wrestling before, and they're pumping athletes out the door. Well, I think that's important, but it's also good to know that, you know, that Terry Steiner, he said, hey, we're happy with third place, but it's not first. This is America. We want to get first place in everything. And uh, one person that kind of led the charge, obviously, is Adeline Gray and Helen Maroulis. But uh, the one that propelled them to that third place finish, Lee James Provisor. Lee James Provisor. All right, we took a quick look at the women. And when we come back, we're going to take an even closer look at the people's champ, Jordan Burrow. Stay tuned.
Welcome back to Global Wrestling News. Jordan Burroughs hit another jackpot, winning his third world title. But perhaps the real story was a 19-year-old sensation named Kyle Snyder. In your estimation, Tony, what was the bigger story, Burroughs or Snyder? Um, I think Kyle Snyder, 19-year-old, winning the world championship. Six mo- within six months of him losing the, the title bout to Kyvin Gatson. I mean, that was a, uh, a mental lapse for him. He, he had to go through some tough times. And to come back and make the world team beating Olympic medal- gold medalist Jake Farner for the world team spot and then coming back to win the world. Just a true inspiration for our youth wrestling. Inspiration for our youth, our young athletes for sure. I think it's an inspiration for everybody. 19 years old, are you kidding me? Have you seen him on the mat? Have you seen him in his post-match interviews? Let's take a look. If I relentlessly attacked him and was winning the hand fight and was faking and moved my feet that uh, he was gonna wear down a little bit. But, um, you know, recently I've been watching him wrestle and he hasn't been gassing much. He's just been doing a lot of winning. So I knew it was gonna be a tough match and I knew that I had to wrestle probably my absolute best to beat him. Talk about your mindset that last minute when you were down and needed to score, and then with the push out, talk about those couple situations. Did you know you still had criteria even after the push out? Well, I didn't think I, I, didn't think I stepped out of bounds, but I didn't want to challenge it, because I, I would just give him some more rest, and a guy like that is, you know, get many rest. So um, I knew that I had two two point moves and a push out and I knew that he had, you know, a couple push outs and one takedown, so I was able to give up that that push out and still still be in the lead. All right, we talked about Kyle Snyder and the brilliance that is, well Saturday night, it was all Jordan Burroughs. It was the final match of the 2015 World Championships. A familiar scene for the United States wrestling legend for sure, but this time the big difference, he did it in front of U.S. fans in Las Vegas, Nevada. 
He put on a memorable show for the eager fans, powering his way to a 10-0 tech fall over Urmbad of Mongolia in the 74-kilo gold medal finals. Burroughs, a 2012 Olympic gold medalist, earned his third world title before a boisterous sold-out crowd at the Orleans Arena. He'll join John Smith and Bruce Baumgartner as the only American freestyler who's combined to win four or more world or Olympic titles. Let's hear what Burroughs had to say. You really can't put this moment into perspective because this is what you dream of. And I'm 27 years old, so a lot of dreams that I have have not come true in life. And so I've been a little bit beaten up by life and understand that everything that you aspire to be isn't always possible. But today I'm a world champion. And so I've been here before, but it never loses its significance when you arrive at this moment again. And so the opportunity presented itself. This guy right here believes in me sometimes more than I believe in myself. And when you've got a coach like that, sometimes you've got to believe in their belief in you to push you above the edge and over the edge, really, because this stuff's not easy. Last year was an extremely tough year for me, losing to Sargush in the semis. And a lot of people forgot about what I was capable of. But I always knew that I still had it within me, and I'm still hungry to do more. And so, at summer four, I mean, I'm in elite company now. It's Burroughs, Smith, and Baumgartner. And, you know, those names are set in a standard amongst themselves. And so when I think of the Mount Rushmore wrestling, I definitely can say I'm one now. All right, Tony. Who's, in your opinion, who's had more impact or who has been more impactful on the world of wrestling, John Smith or Jordan Burroughs? My answer would be Jordan Burroughs. He has changed, uh, and we're, we are living in a, a different world today than when John Smith won it, but uh, with social media, Jordan Burroughs has, has been an inspiration to, again, our youth and our current athletes on the U.S. team. They looked at Jordan Burroughs for guidance when it comes to merchandising and how they, he handles himself on and off the mat, on camera. He is, uh, he is a role model for everyone. All right, well, and obviously that's your point of view. You viewers are going to have your points of view as well. Three-time world team member Reese Humphrey opened the action at 61 kilos when he beat his Kazakhstan opponent, the world bronze medalist, in the first round. The match would end in 11-11 deadlock, but Humphrey would win based on criteria. He then went on to drop a decision, the 2013 junior world silver medalist, and moved into the second round, but there he was eliminated, losing by fall to his Indian opponent in the repage. Were you surprised at Humphrey's performance? Based off his first match, going 11-11, that's, that's an intense match. And to uh, lots of emotions going through his head, especially winning on criteria, I, there was, I think he cut a lot of weight to get down there. When he showed, he put a couple pictures up of him after weigh-ins, and he said that he was pretty happy with how he felt going into those world championships, but he just looked sucked down. You can't blame it on the weight, though. Oh, you can never blame it on the weight at this level. This is what these guys do day in and day out. But I wouldn't say blame it, but I guarantee that it was a factor. Coming back from a 20-minute match, I mean, you, you, this is not 45 minutes like it is in high school and college. You have a time frame there, but I think it was a big factor in his following match and then you know, ultimately... Yeah, I don't think you want to blame it on the weight, do you? No, I mean, I'm not blaming it on the weight. I'm just saying that I think it was a big factor in this. Reese Humphrey's been around a long time, so I mean, he was prepared, you know, I think physically, mentally, but, you know, there was a, a little bit, I think, of, of that weight being an issue for him. Well, let's hear what he had to say. Uh, he was just real sticky with his ties. Um, even when I was down 4 all, I still felt like I just needed to get on top once and I could have beat him. Uh, but, I mean, he's in the finals for a reason. He's, he's really good, and uh, he, he basically just stopped me. Um, I had some really good attempts, and just couldn't, couldn't really get my hands locked. But um, yeah, I really felt good in that match. Uh, the repetition match was a, a different story. I was watching the match. I didn't know it was going to be that quick of a turnaround, so it wasn't very warmed up. Well, that's a brief look at just some of the performances from the 2015 World Championships. For a complete look at the event, interviews, and scores, visit both TakedownWrestle.com and TMWC1.com or our friends at TheMat.com. Let's take a quick time out. You're watching Global Wrestling News.
All right, welcome back to Global Wrestling. The big guys paid attention to the event. And when I say big guys, of course, I mean ESPN. ESPNU aired and re-aired two-hour primetime shows of the final three days of the World Wrestling Championships, including coverage of all four U.S. wrestlers winning a gold in Vegas. Is there enough wrestling on TV? I think there can never be enough wrestling in a, in a media side a world and a fan's world that there can never be enough wrestling on TV, unless there's a whole channel dedicated to it, but you know, just having it on there on replay, I think, is a is a big move for the World Championships and wrestling. I kind of like it uh, when I hear people talking about it, and when I see networks delivering it. ESPN did, Global and Titan Mercury uh, played a big part in the presentation of this whole thing, and I think that's very important. Talk about a leadership role. Yeah, I mean, just to to be able to have covers throughout the week, and then uh, you know, on Wednesday evening, they they did a whole replay of the event. And uh, really good to see that uh, we can highlight our American wrestlers uh, on ESPN. You know, there's arm wrestling, there's cricket, but wrestling needs, deserves its spot on ESPN. Now that's a, a great start for sure. And every week, every month, every year, there's a little more. Takedown and Global Wrestling News programs are the only weekly television programs in the country that highlight wrestling and talk about the sport, but we need live coverage of these events, not replays. The NWCA announced that the 50th annual NWCA All-Star Classic will be airing live on ESPNU November 1st from Atlanta, Georgia on the campus of Georgia Tech. Now, these are the kind of events we're talking about, right? Yeah, these are the events that we have to have the fans come out in masses. They have to watch this live. It has been in the past on replay, but this year they're bringing it to us live. So the fans need to stop talking about having wrestling on TV and watch it. Well, it's been something in the works for years and years, and it's great to see it finally happen. The event is growing every year. Thanks to our friends at Wrestlers in Business and the NWCA. We'll be announcing the matchups in the coming weeks. If you want more information, visit theallstarclassic.com. Again, theallstarclassic.com. Good news. All session tickets for the 2016 Olympic trials that will be held in Iowa City are now on sale. And i got to think the trials will be another huge success for the University of Iowa, for Iowa City, for Coralville, and the state of Iowa. I oh, mean, I'm, I'm excited. This is uh, in our backyard. 2012, they came, Olympic trials, came to Carver Hawkeye Arena. That is the arena every wrestler wants to be in because of the fans. Iowa brings the fans to the table, and I gotta imagine that Iowa City is really excited about bringing these trials back, and I gotta imagine the athletes are excited about having these fans watch them day in and day out and compete for their spot in Rio 2016. Well, I was in the middle of it all, standing in the middle of the mat with Mike, talking to the crowd, and I gotta tell you, it was like I was standing in a sea of friends, for sure, a sea of wrestling fans, and it was absolutely terrific. Perhaps the best experience I've ever had announcing an event. Fans, you can purchase all session tickets for $225 or less. Visit them online at iowacity2rio.com, or you can call them at one 800 IA Hawks. We'll take a quick time out. Wrestling returns to Athens, Greece. We'll talk about that.
Well, wrestling returns to Athens, Greece. That's right. The Veteran World Championships will take place October 12th through the 18th in Athens, Greece. Over 85 athletes in varying age groups and varying abilities will compete in Greco-Roman and men's and women's freestyle. This year marks the largest group of U.S. athletes to compete at the Veteran World Championships. I've talked with some of the competitors scheduled to compete there. First up, 10-time Veteran World Champ, Shirzad Amadi. I've uh, won 10 gold, uh, five uh, bronze, and six uh, silver. So, uh, and I uh, practice every year, and I'm so glad to go in there because I used to, uh, before we didn't have this, so I had to go to senior world championship uh, tryout or Olympic tryout and wrestle, uh, you know, young guys and get hurt or somehow, you know, I uh, didn't enjoy it as much. But now that this is uh, uh, established, so we really uh, have something to uh, work for. I also talked with two-time world champ Steve Turgeon. Well, it is a great, great event. Uh, one of the things I really like about this is you see a lot of people from other countries. Uh, you're communicating with people. Even if you can't speak the language, you're, you're communicating through gestures and, and uh, you know, any way you can talk to people in other countries. It really brings a lot of people from various countries together, and it's, it's really interesting. Uh, it's a great way, great for the sport to show that you can continue doing this as you age. It's not something you have to stop doing when you're, when you're a young man. You can keep doing it and can keep, help you keep in shape, and it's just a lot of fun. In marking his return to action, 1992 Cadet Greco-Roman World Silver Medalist Jason Goldman, he'll be 58 kilos. We talked to the former Binghamton Bearcat. Chris Brown and myself, have been working very hard since the Veterans Nationals in Las Vegas to contact everybody and anybody um, that is 35 or over that has wrestled before to get them involved. Scott, why is, is it seem like the media is not covering this, this world championship for the veterans? I mean, did, did the world championships in Vegas just take the steam out of everybody? I, I don't know if it took the steam out of them, but it did take a lot of time for sure. The wrestling media did an outstanding job covering the world championships. So let this be your invitation to, de to demand more coverage, uh, more coverage for sure from our veteran world championships. Over the coming weeks, we'll do our part. We have additional interviews that will be hitting this TV show and our other sister show, Take Down Wrestling Weekly. You can also visit the website for the international body of wrestling. That's unitedworldwrestling.org. All right, Hager, you ready for some coaching buzz? Well, let's get to it. The Air Force Academy has hired Chase Pammy as a new assistant there starting this fall. He joins the academy by way of the Illinois Regional Training Center. But perhaps the biggest move came for Virginia Tech. They sought out the bearded wonder Mike Zadek from the mountains of Montana. Here's what he had to say. I think he was search, uh, searching for a new coach as far as volunteer positions and guys moving out. And he caught wind of me through a mutual friend and called me up. And, and uh, you know, I've been around the sport with uh, watching the NCAAs, following it on online and stuff like that, but been out of it. And uh, I had the interest of flying me out to take a look at it and, and we just acquired, you know, some dialogue back and forth. And I flew out to take a look at the school and, and meet the guys on the team. And that was kind of what it really the end of it right there. We uh, had a few things that I needed to happen to, to head there. And, and it all happened. And, and we put things together. And, and away we go now. So what would you think of the beard, the ma massive beard? Oh, I think it's very impressive that he's got the beard in, too, that he's doing all right. People want to know when he goes in the mountains, he probably didn't have a whole lot of, had a lot of talk with the outside world, but I think uh, him coming back in the wrestling chair is where he needs to be. He doesn't need to be in the mountains because he can do that while he's at in Virginia. And uh, I think for Coach Dresser to go out and find him and find Derek St. John as well to come in and, and build this program with him, I think they look to put him on the map with, him, with Coach Dresser. I, I hope they don't make him cut the beard, personally. Let's head to South Euclid, Ohio. Notre Dame has elevated to co-head coaching position. Coach Anthony Ralph, he's been with Coach Frank Romano at that program for over 10 years. I could imagine this is a setup for Coach Ralph to take over the program upon the eventual retirement of Frank Romano. Remember, he retired after Kent State. He'll do it again eventually. We're not in any hurry. 
Coach Romano's been there 10 years. Coach Ralph by his side. Two NAI national championships, a Division II national title as well, and seven team national championships at a variety of levels. So for more wrestling news, we invite you to check out TMWC1.com, TakedownWrestling.com, or TheMat.com. Well, that'll do it for the inaugural edition of Global Wrestling News. For Titan Mercury Wrestling, for the clubs around the country, for our executive producer, Andrew Barth, our producer, Wayne Boyd, I'm Scott Casper. For Tony Hager, I invite you to have a good one and join us again right here for Global Wrestling News. That's next week.